You're listening to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Because you can handle the truth. isn't so great today. Uh, this is Spingola Speaks, and this is Deanna Spingola, and I am broadcasting from the Chicago suburbs. Thanks for joining me today at republicbroadcasting.org. You may visit my website at spingola.com, and to access the radio schedule page, just click the radio schedule page on the left side of the page. If you wish to ask questions or make comments during the program, email comment at spingola.email. I only use this email address three hours a week during the program. I invite you to join others in the chat room at spingola.chatango.com. Our archives are spingolaspeaks.net and republicbroadcasting.org. We will be taking questions <coughs> excuse me, in the third hour at 800-313-9443. Our guest today is William Cadwallader. <coughs> I hope I haven't butchered your last name. Bill, are you there? <coughs> uh, yes. Is that how you pronounce your last name, Cadwallader? Yes, Cadwallader. Oh, good. I was right. Okay. Uh, Bill's website. Uh, uh, what? Uh, how's the volume? How's what? Uh, um, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, the website is stopdirtyelectricity.com. Bill is a certified electromagnetic radiation specialist, <coughs> excuse me, and the author of Exposed, The Electronic Sickening of America and How to Protect Yourself. It includes the dangers of 5G and smart devices. Now, not only is he presenting the problems in this book, he also presents 30 pages of quick and easy solutions. Bill is one of 34 international EMF experts featured at the International EMF Help Summit. <coughs> he has presented multiple times at the annual cancer convention, multiple times at the doctor's symposium in Los Angeles, and has taught at the Building Biology Institute. He serves as a coach for Building Biology Institute's apprentice program. He also provides on-site EMF inspections in Nevada, Utah, Arizona, and Southern California. He speaks extensively on solutions. Not just to, he doesn't just tell you about the problems. He tells you about the solutions. Now, being a certified electromagnetic radiation specialist, he has completed advanced, advanced studies in electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation specialists measure radiation and consult for detection and protection in homes, schools, and businesses. We are just so honored to have him on the program today. <coughs> he holds a Bachelor of Science degree from Cal Poly at Pomona and a Master's degree from Pepperdine University in Malibu. Okay. 
Thank you for being on. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, it's just such an honor. And as I mentioned, um, your book not only tells us what's going on, but it gives us solutions. And that's what we all need. There's so many people so fearful of 5G, as we should be. But you offer solutions to these problems. And I've already implemented some of them in my own Wonderful. Home. Right. I discovered that I can turn off Wi-Fi <clears throat> on my router and still be on the Internet through Ethernet. So I did that yesterday after we talked. Perfect. So it was great. So uh, I think that people need to just, um, well, there, there are people that can come out and do in-home inspections as you do, and um, they can do it yourself kinds of things. It's what you, you offer to do telephone consulting. You offer so much help. I'm going to get a drink of water. <laughs> mm-hmm. All righty. Um, you, you had some experiences with some friends um, that really troubled you. And um, you um, you really started looking into this, and uh, you were uh, after your master's degree at Pepperdine. You were a project manager in the aerospace industry in California, as well as with IT in Clark County, Nevada, and um, you spent a lot of time in the U.S. Marine Corps, and retired as a lieutenant colonel in the reserves. Yes, yes. So tell us what you noticed about some co-workers. Yeah, when they first noticed it, it was in the early 2000s. So I was at Clark County, Nevada, and uh, I was working there, and a coworker. Every time I saw him, he always had his cell phone up to his uh, ear. And before meetings, after meetings, even walking to the parking lot and back, and uh, and he developed a huge tumor right where he held that phone. So not in the back of his head, not on the other side of his head, not on the top of his head, but right exactly where he held the phone had surgery and then chemo, and we had a sigh of relief, and unfortunately, it grew back. Massive surgery again, chemo, and then he passed away. Wow. He left a wife, yeah, he left a wife who is now a widow, and he left seven children who are now fatherless. And at that moment in time, I realized the electronic industry was never going to tell us how to use all our electronic devices in the safest possible mode. And that's when I started on this trek. I'm so glad you did. <clears throat> and you um, also discovered that there are a lot of other health issues that um, can be attributed to this electro pollution, including cancer, diabetes, asthma, behavioral disorders, chronic fatigue, ADHD, insomnia, depression, headaches, muscle joint pain, chronic inflammation, and many more. Gosh. Yeah, and uh, when when I normally uh, present, uh, I think I've presented about five times in the last two and a half months. I on my PowerPoint, I have six pages of diseases or health risks, and the next slide after that is I have a camel with a uh, on the ground, and I say, could this be the straw that broke the camel? Oh yes, and we're, yes. And we're, and we're not saying that every single disease in the world is caused by electromagnetic radiation, 
But what we are saying is, could it be a contributory cause? Right. And, uh, yeah, the, the list, I have your PowerPoint in front of me. The list is amazing. Well, thyroid cancer, uterine cancer, uh, just all kinds of cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, uh, brain cancer. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. Yeah, and, I, and, um, mm-hmm. and I mentioned to you that my daughter had passed um, uh, from breast cancer, and um, she's used a cell phone for a long time. And um, she passed away in August. <clears throat> wow, I'm so sorry. Again, yes. to hear that again. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> And um, it's just uh, tragic that the people who are, the corporations who are putting this, these messages out or put, putting this technology out, they, they put in very fine print in the back of, their, uh, of the material that, that you get from them. Uh, for instance, in the cell phones, they put don't, don't use this near your body. Don't put this on your body. <laughs> and probably six six font point. Uh, and people typically don't read those those instructions. And no, um, very few people do. Yeah. Yeah. It damages the DNA. It compromises the the blood brain barrier. Uh, just all kinds of of things. Interferes with the uptake of calcium. Oh gosh, the, the PowerPoint is is fabulous. By the way, it's just really really good. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, the other thing that's on the rise is the glioblastoma multiform brain tumors. Right. And, and those are the ones, and in a short period of time, we had seven people that had, that were diagnosed with a brain tumor. And Deanna, let me ask you, when you were in your early 20s or so, how many people you knew had a brain tumor? Uh, no one. No one, I, no one, nobody did. No. Uh, there was no such thing as ADHD. There was no, <clears throat> people were, were relatively healthy. And um, uh, nobody ever, well, Alzheimer's, for instance. N- nobody right. even talked about it because it just didn't exist like it does now. Yeah, and now they're having earlier stage Alzheimer's. And it's getting even into the 40s now, and that did not happen in the past. And, again, I think the first case of Alzheimer's was diagnosed in 1906. And by 1900, most of the big cities of the U.S. were actually electrified, or I'm sorry, throughout the entire world. And, again, we're not saying that, electromagnetic radiation has caused every single disease in the world, but we're saying could it be the catalyst or could it be a contributory factor? And on the glioblastoma multiforms, the most common brain tumor, is they've actually doubled. So we have places like the Netherlands between 89 and 2010, they've doubled. Also in England between 1995 and 2015, they've doubled. And in Denmark, they've actually doubled and tripled. And what, what, what's, so I, I often, when I speak, I have a question to people. Let's say today you found out that the auto accidents in the U.S. had doubled and consequently the fatalities had doubled. Do you think the government would do something about that? Uh, one would think. But the government really caters to the corporations. Well, okay, let's put it this way. Uh, The people who are supposedly representing us really cater to the corporations with all their ABC agencies. And um, so the the 
representatives go to Washington. Uh, some, of them, some of them go with great intentions, and they usually come back millionaires, and uh, <laughs> and we're suffering uh, because of their actions and because of the uh, corporate uh, structure, corporate profit structures, um, uh, money. It's all greed. And um, I had um, Dr. Samuel Milham on my program talking about dirty electricity right. back back in 2012. And Wonderful. He, he indicated, and he wrote a book about uh, dirty electricity. And um, it's just the, the evidence is there that there were diseases that, that were never heard of until electricity and the, and the way that it was that it was uh, presented to the public the way that it was was um, monopolized and then supplied to the public um, so and, and I'm looking at your all your charts this PowerPoint has great charts great lists it's fabulous. It's just I can't say enough good things about it. And your book. Well, as thank well. you. And, and and I've talked to uh, Sam Milham, uh, Doctor Milham, a number of times. And actually, in my book, and when I present, I have the updated statistics of that middle school. Oh. So there's so there's numbers like twenty four. So people say twenty four, and what's that? 24 teachers and staff got cancer at a single middle school. And you'll say, wow, that, that's got to be bad. It can't get any worse than that. It just got worse. What happened was the next number I put up on the screen is 49. It was a middle school. 49 former students, when they got in their 20s, developed cancer at a single school. Indiana, I'll ask you again, how many, when you're in your early 20s, how many of your friends had cancer? No one. No, uh, I didn't know anybody. Zero. But, uh, yeah. Right. And so 49 from a single school, and then the next number gets even worse. It's 12. Six students have now died, and six teachers and staff have now died. Uh, and what I also put is I have three other numbers. I have a 13. There were 13 times the thyroid cancer at that one school that would have been expected, 10 times the melanoma, and nine times the uterine cancer, and those were just the top three cancers. And Dr. Milham wrote a letter to the board. He went in and measured the school after he found out these facts. Uh, these were a little bit after, uh, and so he sent a nice letter to the, I think, superintendent and the principal of the school and said, you know, I don't know if you have a problem, but I've measured these numbers very, very high, what's called dirty electricity. You mentioned his book. If people haven't read that book, that's a great book. It's about 100 pages long. And what happened was he sent a nice letter to that school. The next thing he got in the mail was from an attorney, a large law firm, that said, Dr. Milham, if you ever step foot on the school again, we'll arrest you under the Homeland Security Act. Uh, and he no, offered... The agency, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And he offered, he said, I didn't know if there was a problem, I don't know, but I'd love to just clean up your electrical issues for free. And that's the letter he got back from that school. Wow. From the attorneys. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. And and I detail that in my book as well. Wow. As as a result of uh, reading his book, several years ago I purchased a monitor and checked all of my outlets and I used the green okay. sensor or the green wave um on on my on my outlets. Um, so it's, it's worked out. That Wonderful. Problem. Okay, we're going to a quick three minute break. We'll be right back.
folks, we're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now, but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind, and then common core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge. And knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20, 30, 40, 50, if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. Click the Donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truths will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. Hey, this check is wrong. I worked a holiday and seven hours of overtime. Not getting paid correctly is a real pain. It could also hurt our boss if our company provides out-of-compliance checks. That's right. Construction companies doing business with the government can get fined, or officials of the company can go to jail if the checks aren't right. It's a law. The Davis-Bacon Act has 30 compliance issues for every check, but there is an easy way for construction companies to be in compliance. EMARS offers Compliant Client, a web-based system that finds and corrects all 30 of the possible out-of-compliance check issues. Users of Compliant Client report an 80% savings in time and money. Running a weekly payroll usually takes about five minutes. All 15,000-plus clients of EMARS have never had a legal compliance issue. Plus, they sleep better on check day. Contact EMARS at emarsinc.com or call 480-595-0466. It starts with you and me. It starts with you and me. We all can be heroes if we take the lead to change the bad to good, to live in harmony. It starts all righty, we are back. Our guest today, <clears throat> today is William Cadwallader. His website is StopDirtyElectricity.com. StopDirtyElectricity.com. And there you may purchase his book, Exposed. The Electronic Sickening of America and How to Protect Yourself. And this includes the dangers of 5G and smart devices, including baby monitors. And I, I, it just horrifies me that people would, well, they do it in ignorance, of course, but place electronics near their infants and Oh, it just it, it's it makes me very sad. Yeah, it's it's a huge problem on my website and my YouTube channel. I I take a baby monitor and I set it up and I back up and I show how far you actually have to get back for the safe area of a baby monitor and um it's like probably 20 or 30 feet. But what room is what room can you put a baby monitor twenty or thirty feet in? You just can't do it. Right. And uh, what what I've also done is I've come up with solutions like uh, 
or 10 or 11 things you can download from our website, just quick, easy type solutions. And the last one is a baby monitor. And it, we recommend that you never use a baby monitor, but if you're going to, you have to measure it, have someone measure. But then there are certain uh, websites, websites like techwellness.com, uh, techwellness.com. They actually have a baby monitor that is safe that you actually can use, and it doesn't emit any Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or wireless. So oh, great. there's other ones out there as well, but, uh, again, you can start there and look at it, and that's a very good place to go. And what I've done on my uh, website, I have 30-minute videos where I, I was a featured speaker at the cancer convention, so if someone wanted more detail, and I always make sure I put in solutions – but if they have a family or a friend and they have a, uh, they only want to watch a minute or a minute and a half, then I have minute, minute and a half videos like step away from the microwave, cancer on your nightstand, or in a very short period of time with a meter, you can see what's being emitted uh, from these devices. All right. Yeah, I got rid of our microwave probably 10 years ago. Um, I don't use a cell phone. I have a cell phone. Wow, I, keep turn, I keep it turned off, and I used it, sure. I think, the last time, maybe three months ago, I, I made a phone call. <laughs> That's great. And and when I go out to a house or I talk to someone on the phone, I always give them good, better, and best solutions. So sometimes they can't do the best solution for whatever reason. Then we go back to a better solution or a good solution. So I want to make sure people do something. And any little advancement toward reducing the wireless radiation is good. And um, there's, there's a huge problem now with young people. So there was a study, and what, what the study showed recently is that, and this came from the American Cancer Society, and it had to do with colorectal cancer. And all of a sudden, it's climbing in young adults. So for uh, people age 65 and plus, since 19, uh, actually 75, or around 1980, it actually has start, started to drop for males and females. But wow, and, and I do present this uh, on my website, or actually when I speak, but in about 1990, when cell phones started, for people who are age 20 to 49, it's going up. It's going through the worth, uh, roof. So why is it dropping in, in older people or 65 and above and going through the roof in this other ones? You know, could it be poor nutrition? Could it be a sedentary lifestyle or obesity or other risk factors? But could it be texting and carrying a cell phone be another possible contributor? So ladies, tend to carry their cell phone in the back of their pocket, and men tend to carry it in the front of their pocket. And most people don't know when you're not making a call every 6 to 30 seconds, that cell phone is going off, trying to find the nearest cell tower, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi device. And when it goes off, it's thousands of times the safe level. Right. It's just pul- crazy. Even- pulsing, right? Is what it, it's pulsing doing. every 6 to 30 seconds. And there's four, five, six, even more, you know, antennas in the back of a cell phone. And each of those are always trying to connect to say, hey, uh, you know, where's the nearest Bluetooth device? Where's the nearest Wi-Fi device? Where's the nearest cell phone tower? And it constantly goes off. Recently, just actually in California, I was in California last week, and a lady wanted me to measure her truck. So she has a brand new truck, and she has Wi-Fi in it. So we used to only have Bluetooth in a truck, Mm -hmm. but she actually has Wi-Fi. Wow. Do you want me to continue with this after the break? Yes, we will be right back in three minutes. Stay with us. Great. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org.
Many people write us about their experience with Extendivite. Allow me to read you some from Amazon.com. It really does work like the review says it does. I cannot believe that after the first few days, I didn't feel as sluggish or clogged up. It has had a profound impact on my physical, emotional well-being. I'm skeptical as most people about products and their claims, and I never write reviews, but this is a wonderful product, and I recommend it to everyone. Great product. It has brought my blood pressure from the mid-150s over the 80s to the mid-130s over mid-80s. Along with diet and exercise in just the past couple of months. Excellent. Thank you, David. Tell us your story. Get Extendivite today. Call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. Corporate media dominates the American opinion. Finding independent voices that counter this avalanche is becoming increasingly difficult. With the endless corruption running rampant throughout our government, independent voices are needed more than ever to battle the offensive against our freedoms and liberties. As a listener of RBN, no one understands this concept better than you. Now it's up to you to do your part. The time has come for you to take action and begin broadcasting the truth to hundreds or thousands of people every month. Sound impossible? Quite the contrary. With pointed slogans from LibertyStickers.com, you can reach countless sleeping Americans unaware that they live in a real-life wonderland. LibertyStickers.com has a huge inventory of political bumper stickers and messages that reflect the truth about our government, our politicians, and the future of America. With so many in stock, there's one perfect for you. Visit us today at LibertyStickers.com. Again, that's LibertyStickers.com. Do your part. Your voice is important. Let it be heard. Homeowners, if your lender has gone out of business or sold your transaction to another lender or servicer, you may be the victim of a wrongful foreclosure resulting in the loss of your home. If you've already lost your home, are in foreclosure, or even in good standing, you can challenge the mortgage transaction's illegal issue, and your property can be restored to you, and your foreclosure can be stopped or reversed, and the mortgage transaction declared unenforceable. State laws, U.S. title codes, the Uniform Commercial Codes, and U.S. Supreme Court rulings have upheld that defective mortgage documentations can reverse or stop foreclosures and enforce property title claims in favor of the homeowner. We are having successes in stopping the process of foreclosure, the enforcement of the foreclosure judgments, the sale of property, and evictions after the sale. We are not attorneys, and we don't give legal advice. We are a professional team of legal researchers, providing forensic mortgage audits and expert witnesses. We have the knowledge to produce the evidence and enforce laws regarding your legal issues. We've been in business for 12 years without a complaint. Consultations are free, and we provide a free title search to confirm if your mortgage has legal defects. Please call 855-253-3748. 855-2-KEEP-IT-TODAY. It starts with you and me. It starts with you and me. We all can be heroes if we take the lead. All righty, welcome back. This is Deanna, and our guest today is Bill Cadwalder. His website is StopDirtyElectricity.com. He is the author of Exposed, The Electronic Thickening of America and How to Protect Yourself, which includes dangers of 5G and smart devices. It's a wonderful book. Thank you. Thank you for reading it. I, I sure appreciate that. And as you emphasized, in that book we have we devote three chapters to solutions, how to handle wired devices. And uh, what what happens is, is there's three radiations that come from wires. There's electric radiation, magnetic radiation, and dirty electricity. And then there's three types of radiations that come through the air. There's Wi-Fi, wireless, and Bluetooth, commonly called RF. And so in that book, we talk about handling all the the three radiations from the wire and the three uh, radiations through the air. And we wrote the book that it was technically accurate, but anyone could understand it. So we kept the accuracy, but we wanted to make sure it was at a level that you didn't have to have a technical degree or be technical to understand it. And we made it as practical as we possibly could in that book. Wonderful. And it is. It's just a a great book. 
as I said, it has solutions. Uh, many, many people. Yes, many people understand that there's a problem, and um, sometimes they they really don't. They don't want to believe that there could be so many problems associated with this because people love their technology. Uh, it's it has a wonderful use. But it also comes with a lot of dangers, uh, health dangers. And just um, if you get a, a, something, a disease that, that kills you, it doesn't have to kill you. It could just disable you. It could make you, it could give you all these other health issues. Uh, all the children that, uh, that have problems, uh, all the leukemia. Children never, ever got cancer, ever. It was it was an old pe- old people's disease, and I think one in fifty people got it. Now there's there's two and three. Pe- it, it, the it, it's just the rates have, have gone through the ceiling. It's just awful. And yeah. when you see children with cancer and leukemia, infants. That, that get it before they're one. There's, there's got to be a, a reasons for this. Yeah, I. Um, uh, before I forget, we we talked about you know phones being carried in the back pocket oh, right, and right. in the in the front pocket. So again, we're all about solutions today. And then the ten things uh, you can download free from my website. It's called Ten Ways You Can Reduce Radiation Exposure Now. And it's actually a little, uh, you can print it out. It's, it's actually a trifold. And, uh, uh, but in there we talk about always put, if you want to carry it safely in your pockets, so airplane mode on and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off. So if you put right. airplane mode on, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off, it turns off all the radiation. My wife is hiking near, in a canyon uh, clear, uh, close to us. And so that's the way she carries her phone. Every so often she turns the airplane mode uh, back off, and now she can receive her messages and voicemails and anything that would have come through. So you won't lose anything. It just makes it completely safe, and that's all right. someone has to do. Right. If, if you want to turn the phone off, off, you can do that, but a lot of times it's better to put airplane mode on, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off, and then that way uh, it's very easy just all you do is flip a, you know, extra screen, and immediately you can see anything that you have. And and uh, I I do want to address uh, cases sometimes. So there are cases out there, and I've measured hundreds of cases. And if you have a phone case and and it said, you know, we reduce the radiation, if you can still receive a phone call when that phone is in the case, then there's radiation leaking out. Uh, one of the four edges or the front or the back of the phone. And people sometimes think they're 100% safe, but if they can still receive a call, then it's leaking out. And I often tell people normally cases protect maybe the front or the back. And then I often say if they have it in their purse or in their pocket, what part of their body do they not care about? Is if it's leaking out the top, are they not concerned about their torso? If it's leaking out the back, are they not concerned about their lower part of their anatomy? And and so on. And so what we teach people is how to use it safely. And that's what we want to do is try to use all these electronics uh, equipment. And you can use it very, very safely. Right. And those little decals and other things that you can put on your phone, those are not going to help, right? Well, what uh, we address those in uh, chips, pendants, and uh, dots in the back of the book. We devoted an entire chapter to that. And when you talk to the – so what we recommend is that when we're in a home or you're using your phone, you use it in the safest possible mode. Mm-hmm. And what those – is all the chips and pendants and things that I've seen. Some people feel better with them. What we recommend is that you do everything as safe as possible, like in your home with the, you know, like with your router. And then if you want to use those, then use them. 
after you've done all the other remediation that we talk about, and then use them for a week or two, see how you feel, and then don't use them for a week or two, and then see how you feel. But all the ones I've seen, they're never claimed to be a shield. They claim some other other things. And again, I've met people who feel better, but we always want, uh, there's over 5,000 studies that have been done that talk about this much radiation at this distance for this amount of time will result in these type of health effects. So what happens is if you put something on a phone, that they've never done studies to say, hey, by the way, here was a health effect at this type of radiation at this distance for this length of time. Let's put something on the back of the phone and did the health, you know, whatever health issues happen, did they go away? So, again, I'm not saying never use them, but I'm saying clean up how you use, learn some great habits. And in a home, we have things like turn off your router when you're not using it, uh, the Wi-Fi, um, again, hardwire as much as you can. And we detail those in quick and easy little steps. And, again, do those first. And then if you want to uh use one of those devices, you just use them for a week or two, see how you feel, and then don't use them. And one of the first things that we say in the 10, 10 ways you can reduce radiation is electronic devices, including chargers and clocks, get them as far away from your nightstand as possible. So never charge your cell phone on your nightstand. Move it as far away as possible. And I was doing a uh, – do I have time for a small story? Oh, sure. Yes, we have about two minutes. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was working uh, in a home, and we do on-site remediation. So I was was coming out out of the home. Then the lady of the house told me that there was a young girl, a teenager across the street that just had surgery. I said, surgery? I, I said, what for? She had a huge tumor on the side of her face. Oh. It was a nine-hour surgery, and it was non-malignant. And she told me she stepped, slept with her cell phone right next to her pillow. Oh. And then I said, wow. And and then I happened to see that lady again, uh, not at her home, but uh, I saw her again. And she said, you know that 16-year-old girl that had that nine-hour surgery? I said, yes. She, she said, she's now 17. I said, oh. The tumor grew back. Another oh. nine-hour surgery. This time it was malignant, and this time she had plastic surgery. Oh, now, dear. Deanna, I can't prove that that cell phone caused that tumor on the side of her face where she kept it on her pillow. Remember, every six to 30 seconds, that cell phone goes off, trying to find the nearest cell tower, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi device, thousands of times a safe level of radiation. But I can prove if she would have taken that phone and she would have put it across the room, that phone could have never caused that particular tumor on the side of her face. Right. Yeah. Just so we're just asking people to modify some easy-to-do habits, and we have solutions if uh, whatever might come up, and that's all we're doing at this, you know, to help people to modify just some small, most of the time they're two or three minutes, just two or three minutes changing some easy-to-do habits. Right, you can do that in settings. I have an iPad, and um, I have a lot of of, uh, Kindle books uh, on my iPad. Uh, I I disable the Bluetooth. I disable the Wi-Fi. Everything's downloaded so that if I do take it to bed, which I usually do, I have it on airplane mode. I've, I've got everything downloaded so that nothing is pulsing. And I use a battery-operated clock. I only have Good. one one electrical. Uh, I have two because I, I do earthing. So I have a plug-in for my earthing mat, and I also have a Himalayan salt lamp, which is as far away as I can get it. So I only have right. two... Two electrical appliances or two two outlets that are working that I use in my bedroom, and then I turn off my router, right. 
before I retire and I try and make the house as safe as I can. That's that's wonderful. That's that's really important. And just to let people know, uh, on number six of my 10 ways to reduce radiation, I have a special note for Apple products. And actually, I came. I was in California uh, just last week uh, doing some uh, EMF audits, and I came across it twice. And uh, when we say turn on airplane mode with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off when you're using the device, if you don't uh, need an internet connection, such as reading the, uh, a downloaded book, exactly like what what you do. What we recommend is they download the book and then. They turn those device airplane mode on, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off. But I have a special note on on Apple products, not connected. The two words not connected still means radiation is on. And it actually happened twice when I was in California. Really? And so if anyone happen, has an Apple device, and I actually, that's why I have it as a footnote. I've just seen it too many times. If you ever see the term not connected, that means you have it active on your phone or iPad, or and it's still trying to connect to either Bluetooth or connect to Wi-Fi, and it's sending out radiation every 6 to 30 seconds, thousands of times the safe limit. So if you have an Apple product and you ever see that on your phone, all you have to do is go one screen deeper, and you can turn it off off. Right. Yes. Wow. Well, when I use uh, uh, my iPad, my router's off, um, and I, I turn all that stuff off. I download everything that I want. I turn turn all. I only turn the the Wi-Fi and the. Uh, and I, I never use Bluetooth, but I only turn Good. the Wi-Fi on just to download a new book or to um, to sync. Sure. What, what I've read on my on my computer or my laptop uh, with the iPad, and then I turn it off. It just I just never have it on. It, it's just uh, yeah. There's uh, that's that's perfect. And when I go out to a house, we have good, better, and best solutions. So the best solution is to hardwire as much as you can, right. and then uh, a better solution is only turn the Wi-Fi on when you need it, and turn it off. And actually, they sell routers now that actually have a Wi-Fi button. So right. we recommend those to people. And there's actually a colleague of mine. It's called electrohealth.com, electrohealth.com. He's actually taken a router. It has a Wi-Fi on and off button, but he's reduced the radiation when the Wi-Fi is off over 95%. So it's still strong enough to get a signal because the routers they're putting out can go, you know, 50 feet, 100 feet, 150 feet. So he's he's actually gone in and changed the router. And uh, it's a great little router. And, again, it has a Wi-Fi on and off button. And they've reduced when the Wi-Fi is on over 95%. Now, we always recommend that before you talk to your cable company or your phone company or whoever provides your Wi-Fi, Go on to the site, get the name of the router, and then call them first to say, will you support this router? Mm-hmm. You know, this, you know, either AT&T or Comcast or Cox Cable or, you know, and just sort of do that before you buy any router just to make sure they support those. Right. That particular router. The other thing, too, is um, that you should have a wired keyboard, not not yes. a wireless and a mouse. If you use a mouse, get a get a, a wired one, so that it's hardwired, uh, so that it, it's just it's just safer. It's just much safer. And uh, same for the printer. Uh, never stand in front of a printer that's you know uh, wireless. You, you leave the room or you hardwire it to your computer. You, you just want. Things that are hardwired. Yeah, that's perfect. I, I actually was in California at uh, one of the uh, EMF audits I was doing, and I measured a wireless mouse. And so we want people, you know, normally uh, for the Wi-Fi, wireless, and Bluetooth, uh, I'm going to give you a number sort of under 100, 
And when I say under 100, I don't expect people to remember this, but it's microwatts per meter squared. But just think about that. I, I want to be under 100. I measured a Bluetooth mouse. It was 144,000. And that <gasps> person has their hand on that Bluetooth mouse. Oh, my gosh. And and it happens all the time. What what I also do is in the back of my book, sometimes you're in a place like northern Utah calls me and says, you know, I can't get up to northern Utah. And so I have residential meters in my book as well, residential meters that I've used, I've tested against my commercial meters. And you can find if someone wants to get an idea of what's in their house, uh, there's residential meters that I list that people can buy. Wow. All righty, we're going to a three-minute break. We'll be right back. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Public Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. Many people tell us about their experience with Extendivite. Just listen to what Glenn has to say. Prior to taking it, I had diabetic neuropathy. The Extendivite reduced that significantly. Acid reflux was reduced. I had athletes with very severe, trimmed that down to about 75% dandruff, almost completely gone. I had a simple, a simple neuralgia at the base of my skull. I was having migraines reduced by about 90%. Heart palpitations, my heart would kind of stall out. I would skip a beat. Very uncomfortable. And when walking from downstairs going to sleep, by the time I got to the bedroom, which is just one flight of stairs, my heart was pounding coming out of my chest. My vision was blurry. This completely solved that problem. Great product. Thanks. Tell us your story. Get Extendivite today. Call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. Hey, is that a new music app? Yeah, check it out. Surfer Music Discovery. It links to thousands of online stations, but the twist is you see the song names and artists that are now playing live. That's different. No guessing. Looks like a waterfall of music. So many formats. Rock, oldies, country, R&B, jazz, and a whole lot more. How's that spelled? Surfer. S-U-R-F-R. Is it expensive? It's free. No need to sign up or sign in. Get the Surfer Music app free from Google Play or the App Store. So you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. back and our guest today is Bid Bill Cadwallader. His website is stopdirtyelectricity.com. Uh, he is the author of Exposed, the Electronic Sickening of America and How to Protect Yourself. It includes dangers, 5G, and smart devices. And uh, I was just going over the list again in the PowerPoint about all the diseases and 
tinnitus and sleep disturbances and and Parkinson's and rheumatoid arthritis and um, it weakens the immune system. You have numbness and tingling sensations, heart problems, headaches, dizziness, nausea, lupus, miscarriages, uh, MS, AD, ADD, ADHD, Alzheimer's, asthma, autism, birth defects, uh, blood-brain barrier is at risk, blood pressure, chronic fatigue, on and on and on. Uh, w- would you think tendonitis would also be an issue? Oh, hair loss to fibromyalgia. Uh, <laughs> this list is just amazing. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, can I talk about miscarriages real quick? Yes, yes. Yeah, there was a study in Kaiser Permanente did late 2017, early 2018, and they took over 900 ladies. Kaiser Permanente is a large um, HMO and uh, large medical concern in California. And they looked at over 900 ladies, and when the radiation was twice as much in a particular environment at their home and work, they had a lot more miscarriages than when it wasn't. So again, here's a very short period of time. Here's a direct correlation. You know, could be a causation. But again, it, uh, Kaiser Permanente, uh, is a very respected medical and that's what they found that the higher the radiation, the higher the miscarriages in a particularly where a lady actually slept in the work. Wow. Um. Our producer um, said that, um, well, he sent a video. Uh, he, he Skyped a video link to me. And he said that there was a guy who was traveling and stopped near a hospital with a cell tower in the background and took readings with a good meter, and it was showing levels up to 6,000. Usually. Easily. Oh, I, I measure it all. Yeah, 60. 60. 60. Wow. Yeah, I've, uh, I was at a house recently here in Las Vegas on the northern part of the valley, and in the backyard there was a cell tower uh, a pretty good distance away, and it was in the backyard it was 95,000. Oh. I watch per meter square. And it just, uh, terrible. And then in Las Vegas, and with 5G, if I can talk a little bit about 5G now, is there actually, they, there's a, let me get back to the FCC. You mentioned corporations and things. Harvard right. did a study, and they said the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, that regulates all our cell phones and all this communication, was the most captured agency in the U.S., Wow. Meaning it's controlled by corporate lobbyists. Of course. Absolutely. Okay, we will be right back. We're at the top of the hour. We'll be right back. Are you in foreclosure, expecting to be served with a foreclosure lawsuit, or suspect your lender has coerced you into an illegal mortgage transaction? A huge number of mortgages made in the last 10 years have legal issues and are possibly defective. State laws and the U.S. Supreme Court have upheld that defective mortgage documents are grounds for foreclosure defense and for counterclaims in favor of the homeowner. If your mortgage has been sold or assigned since closing the loan, it may be defective and you may be paying the wrong party and the lender may not have standing or the right to foreclose or collect payments under the law. If you would like to know if your mortgage is legal or not, or know if you are paying the right party, we can help. Our initial consultations are free of charge. We are not attorneys. We are legal researchers and work closely with experienced lawyers who know how to help you find the evidence to help you keep your home. Call toll free 1-855-2-KEEP-IT. That's 1-855-2-KEEP-IT today. 
listening to Republic Broadcasting Network because you can handle the truth. Truth, 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 truth. And our guest today is William Cadwallader. His website is StopDirtyElectricity.com. Bill is a certified electromagnetic radiation specialist and the author of Exposed, The Electronic Sickening of America and How to Protect Yourself. Includes dangers of 5G and smart devices. Not only does he present problems, he also presents solutions and ways to deal with with the use of technology. So welcome back. Thank you. And we were talking a little bit about the FCC. And when I present, or actually in my book, uh, uh, we have actually all the lobbying dollars that was done by industry. And most people would think that, you know, the pharmaceutical would be the largest lobbying uh, dollars. And they had about four, $277 million last year. And when we say lobbying dollars, that's not dollars for advertising. That's literally money going from that particular company to a legislature. But right. guess what the F's, guess what the telecommunication and utilities lobbied? They were $410 million. They were the largest lobbying group, not the FDA, not the pharmaceuticals. And you'll say, well, well, there's probably independent people in the FCC that will keep us safe. The current director, no. the head guy, is a former attorney for Verizon. Exactly. And what happens is, and the one before that was a actually a chief lobbyist for CTIA. CTIA is the lobbying group for cell phones. So again, that's the problem that we have. And when they passed the new telecommunications law in 1996 and they put the standards in place, they made sure the standards were so high, meaning not high in a good sense, but so unachievable that remember how I said, you know, we want you a little under 100 or a little over 100, and mm-hmm. your producer had found 60,000 from a website, and I found 95,000, I'm sorry, from a cell tower, and I find 95,000. Gets what the official limit of the FCC is. And if you're below that, you're okay. It's 10 million microwatts per meter square. Oh, my gosh. So, Deanna, the only way you're going to exceed that is to put your pillow right next to a cell tower. And that's what they did in 1997. The Telecommunications Act was published in 1996 and then 1997. And for over 20 years, different groups have been trying to lower that to a reasonable level like some other countries, but they've never done that. The other thing they put in the telecommunication law that most people don't know you can never deny a cell phone placement based on yeah. health or environmental reasons. Yeah. And so they have this coming and going with the um, with the, the telecommunications, and then when you and, and that's yeah. why and that's why yes, that's why we have solutions because certain things. At least at this point, I support change. I hope, you know, I support all the people that are lobbying, you know, that are trying to get change. But, again, we need solutions today. And I can't change the past, but we can sure prove your future with solutions. And I don't know if you happen to see my consumer electronics show slides. Uh, it had to do uh, – it's a lar- one of the largest shows in Las Vegas, and they have all the new wireless Wi-Fi uh, Bluetooth gadgets, and so I went out there, and I have a complete uh, a list of those in the back of my book, a, com- uh, a consumer safety audit list by room. But let's just 
can I talk about three things that sure. have to do with yeah, babies? Just, yeah, so that, absolutely. When I present the when I present the first thing I show is that there's a hand with a cell phone, and then there's a baby bottle in the back, and literally the Bluetooth baby oh. bottle tells the parent how much liquid it is and how what the temperature of the liquid is. And so a baby now is wrapping his or her arms around a mini cell tower right there oh. holding that Bluetooth. And you'll say, it can't get any worse than that. My next slide shows a baby with diapers with a wireless adapter. It tells the parent on their cell phone if the child is wet. Now you've wrapped a cell tower around the abdomen of a baby. Oh my gosh. And then someone says, it can't get any worse than that. Then I put up slide three. It's a pacifier. It's a blue. Oh pacifier. no. The baby is sucking on a pacifier to tell the parent what the temperature of the baby is. Now a baby is literally sucking on a cell tower. And just to let you know, for Wi-Fi babies, there's never been any, there's no pre-market studies and there's no long-term studies on any of this stuff. It's just, it's just heartbreaking. Well, there's so many people that think that the FDA and that the government is protecting them and that they would never allow anything dangerous to be marketed, and, and people are just so so ignorant. Some some selectively ignorant. Uh, they they love their their technology so much that they they avoid looking at these things. They they just they don't want to know, and hoping that that everything will be fine. But people must take responsibility for their own choices and for their own health situation. And um, people need to read more. Uh, people who will not, right. will not read have no advantage over those that cannot read. So people need to be reading up on this book, the, your book. People need to read your book. So that, that's yeah. the long yeah. short. People need to read your book. And, and and one of the things we did in the book, you someone will say, well, look, this has never happened before. So what we do in the book is we have timelines for asbestos. Everyone knows asbestos is bad. Guess when they first associated asbestos was bad? It was 1918. But the laws didn't get passed on asbestos until the 1970s. You'll say, well, right. that just happened for asbestos. EPA. They first determined in the 1930s, BPA was bad for you. Lead in paint was 1950s. And actually, lead in gasoline was 1922 when they associated a problem oh. with that. DDTs, you know, DDT was invented in right. 19, late 30s by a Swiss guy, a Swiss scientist. And in 1950s, they realized that there was a big problem. And what happened was because the government and the industry colluded on this, it took decades later. And here's the biggest one of all. The first smoking study that linked smoking with lung cancer came out in 1929. And it was decades, 70 years later, before anything was really done with the tobacco company. And then in our book, we show you the timeline of all this telecommunication, wireless, and everything, and we show how it's going through the same type of timeline. Because the industry and government both knew about it, but because they're captured agencies by the lobbyists and by the corporations, then nothing is being done. Wow. But, you know, we're all about solutions today. Let it, let me know when you want to uh, start on some solutions because we sure don't want to leave those out of the conversation. No. Um, I, I'm just looking at the timeline. I'm looking at your, at your book. Um, and there's a, you have a lot of links um, in yes. your which is fabulous. It, it, you just have so much help. Uh, it's just 
Wonderful. I can't I can't say enough good things about your book. It's, it's well, thank you for those kind words. Marvelous book. Um, and you have all these timelines, the ones that you just referred to. And um, I, um, we, we can talk more about some of the problems. So I think you've captured you've captured the audience in there. There. Uh, regarding problems, but if you want to throw in some more, uh, well, feel free. Uh, you know, most people, yeah, most people don't know what's happening with 5G, and literally in a week and a half, I'm going to the largest uh, world mobile congress, and it's actually held in Los Angeles, and it'll be the October 22nd, 23rd, and that's when all the new wireless and cell phone companies get together and they show all their new stuff. Right. And most people don't know some of the issues with 5G. So with 5G, uh, and the G means just generation. So right. we had 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G, and it's just a new infrastructure. We don't lose anything that we had before. We still have all the radiation, and they're just going to put another layer. But most people don't know now, and they're doing this in Las Vegas, the density of cell towers will now increase. So uh, now the FCC has a new regulation that they can put up a cell tower every 250 feet. So not a half a mile or something like that. Now it's every two. And literally in Las Vegas, they're starting to put it on lamp, on lamp posts. And what, what that would mean is that potentially every two to 12 houses could literally have a cell tower. A good friend of mine, a colleague up in Sacramento, Eric Wintime, one day he woke up, went outside, and all of a sudden there's a 5G antenna right on his lamppost, 36 feet from his wife's office. Oh they're also my gosh. going to, yeah, they're also going to increase the output. So now an antenna might do about 12 connections, you know, very rapidly, and now they're going to go up to 100 connections. Your smartphone's going to act as a hub to everything. And here's the key thing. If someone says, you know, smoking's bad for me, I'm not going to smoke. You have that choice, right? Right. And most restaurants now don't allow smoking. There is no opt-out on this. You cannot go and say, I don't want that cell tower because it will harm me or potentially harm me. I'll, I'll use that term. But there is no opt-out. And remember, in the 1996 law, you can never deny a cell phone placement based on health or environmental reasons. Well, what other reason would you ever deny it? Right. You know, it's and sort of they, crazy. They, they were really covering their butt, weren't they? Well, they, the electrical utilities and the cell phone guys, they wrote that bill and the Congress just rubber stamped it. Oh, that's, that's, basically that's what, what they do. That's what all the corporations yep. do. They write their own bill. Then they hand it over to the, our so-called representatives, and uh, the representatives either, well, they vote for it because they've been paid uh, lobbyist fees to do that. And, again, oh, it's currently gosh. the telecommunications and utilities are $410 million per year, and they're the largest lobbying group. And and what really started, you talked about childhood and leukemia. And in my book, we have almost 300 references, you know, scientific peer-reviewed references. And so what we talk about is we talk about 1996, Dr. Nancy Wertheimer and Ed Lieber produced a paper around Denver, Boulder area that said the closer someone lived to a high-voltage power line, you know, those large right. above-ground power lines, the greater the chance of childhood leukemia. And I think you were mentioning that early. And so right. at that point, the electrical utilities went on the offense. And today, there is no standard for electrical utilities. You can be as high as you want. There is nothing to say, oh, it's this high. We're not allowed to build the house next to this power line. And I get a lot of calls. People are in the middle of buying a house, and all of a sudden they notice a utility uh, high voltage power lines you know, or, a, or a substation. So they call me out and I do a, um, I do an a, a EMF audit outside the house, you know, just to measure electric mm -hmm. and magnetic radiation from those power lines. But um, 
Yeah, and and if I may talk about with 5G, they're doing one other step. They're actually going to put satellites in space. So currently, we have about since since satellites were first launched with the Sputnik, there's about 5,000 satellites in orbit. You know, in 57 or 58 when they launched it. And so now the Wi-Fi satellites, and they've already launched the first 60 of them, SpaceX is going to put 12,000 satellites more. One Web is going to put over 4,500 satellites, and Samsung is going to put over 4,600 satellites. And there's actually 13 companies that are actually going to put satellites in orbit now, and they'll be beaming Wi-Fi down to every basic person, you know, in uh, in the continent, and that's what they're doing at this point in time. They're just putting a lot of Wi-Fi from above now. Uh, now you mentioned Bill Gates, and you also yes uh, mentioned uh, Steve Jobs. Yeah, Steve Jobs. <laughs> yeah, uh, they did not allow their children to use electronics until they were fourteen or, or and sixteen. Um, yes. They would would not do that, and it, it's just how how do these people who are producing the stuff protect themselves from from the stuff coming from satellites? Uh, they must be doing something. They must know something that they're keeping well, from the rest of us. How? Yeah, we're they we're hoping themselves? the satellite. Yeah, we're hoping the satellites are of a lower intensity and that we're hoping that what's going to happen is they're going to have large collectors that will then pick up that Wi-Fi signal, oh, you know, like dishes, and then send it to your house. That's what we're hoping, but that's why I, I go to the World Mobile Congress. That's why I go to the Consumer Electronics Show every year. And then what I do is I update my book based on that. So we always want a living type book because – this is changing fast enough that when someone picks up my book, I want to make sure they have the most, you know, uh, the most current information. But that's what we're hoping on the satellites. Now, it doesn't account for the rockets, you know, being launched and, you know, what's happening with all that. So right. uh, there's actually an agent, there's actually a group of people who are concerned about that. The other thing is they're putting sensors everywhere as part of the 5G. So, I don't know if you know about that, that if you happen to have um, certain types of smart speakers, uh, sometimes they can listen in to what you say and are they keeping the information in data, in corporate databases of what you're saying on those smart speakers? We don't know what they're doing with that information. So, again, when someone – when I mean a smart speaker, that's a speaker where you speak to it and say, hey, what's the temperature uh, in in Boston – yeah, yeah, those type. There's about three major ones by the major guys. And so they're recording voices. The question is, are they putting those in databases at the corporate level? Of I course. don't know that. And, I, don't, and, I don't know if they're doing that or not. Uh, but you, mm-hmm. but knowing what, what you know and knowing how sneaky things are, things are uh, you just have to ask that question. Uh, and why did they... Years ago, well, not that long ago, uh, suggested everybody have a have a different kind of a television, um, right? And actually paid people to upgrade their TVs, or assisted people to upgrade their TVs, and um, and the smart meters. Um, now, we can opt. I have opted out of a smart meter. I have to pay oh, extra good. each month. But mm-hmm. in, in 2020, they are saying no more opt-outs. You have to have one. So um, even if you pay uh, or are willing to pay, they're going to insist that you have one no matter what. I have a sign on mine. Do not put one in. And it's very interesting when I put that sign on my on my analog meter. That afternoon, somebody from from Comcast came and visited me and asked me what was going on. Wow. Uh, Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back. Be right back in three minutes.
folks, we're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now, but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind, and then common core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge and knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20, 30, 40, 50, if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. Click the Donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truths will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. Without the right accessories, any guy can be off the mark. Whether you've invested thousands in your arsenal or you own a single trusted firearm, a visit to aroutfitting.com is in order. It's one of the finest online selections of tactical optics and AR parts and add-ons, like EOTech, quick target acquisition with no peripheral loss. Browse the full range of Nikon scopes and binoculars. Aroutfitting.com can illuminate your world with streamlight gun-mounted lights from keychain to large handhelds up to 1,100 lumens. Find some stability with Battenfield Tactical Bipods. AirOutfitting.com has CMMG gun parts, barrels, assemblies, handguards, hard kits, and more. Plus magful clips and magazines. I know I've got you excited, so take a breath. Head to AirOutfitting.com. The site's super easy to navigate and features a ton of technical info, including links to manuals. We also welcome vendor and manufacturer inquiries. Remember, if you don't see it, we can get it at AirOutfitting.com. It starts with you and me, it starts with you and me, we all can be heroes if we take the lead, to change the bad to good, to live in harmony, it starts All right. Alrighty, uh, this is Deanna, and our guest today is Bill Cadwallader. His website is StopDirtyElectricity.com. We were talking about smart meters, and uh, uh, there was a couple of people in a neighboring community that were actually arrested because they they prevented the uh, technicians from coming in their their gates their backyards to install smart meters. They were arrested. Was was that in Naperville? Yes. You probably are aware of that story. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's a very there's a great documentary. It's called Take Back Your Power. Right. So By if Josh you go to Del- Take Back Del- Your Del- Power. Mm-hmm. Yes. And now it's available free. So free. you can go out there and watch that and they talk about the smart meters. And in certain places where you can't opt out, uh, there's another website. Uh, I, I deal with it, but there's a website that has uh, four things you can do. And if you go to Jerry Day EMF, um, right. just do a Google search on that. And then up at the top, he has basically four things. I think it's four things you can do to then, if you can't get it off your house, then he has uh, four things to uh, shield it. Right, I saw those, and I, I've interviewed both of those gentlemen. Oh, great! They're, they're fabulous. 
Um, so yes, I have that uh, that on my list of things to get when they come and put that smart meter on my house, which they they are problem. going to do. Yeah, and uh, I've known people who've who've lost their animals to tumors, and and their one person lost her husband within a very very short time of having a smart meter. And it, it just breaks my heart that all this is going on. It's it's just criminal. It is criminal. Absolutely. Those criminal. are very good words. Those are very good words. Um, so we were talking. I can't get, get it off my mind that people sure. would, would use their infant, would, would, do this with infants, a pacifier, a di- you know, just feel the diaper. If it's wet, just change it, okay? Just, oh, I, this is horrible. And bottles? I think that a lot yeah, of people... Those, go ahead. No, I was just saying, and those are just the three. So in my book, in a pectin, appendix A, the home, a comprehensive home safety audit... I have like bedrooms, but I have a specific place for nursery. So I list all the things currently that they have. So even if you don't have a meter or you have someone not come out, you can say, oh, I didn't know that could be a problem. And uh, someone can determine if, if they have any of those devices. But they're making everything smart now, the smart home. And, and when I go out to uh, – when I went out in 2019, I'll be going in 2020, January, the whole thing theme was everything was going to report to your cell phone and your cell phone was going to control everything. Right. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to put controls in every single thing. And because they have another product they can sell, they can make money. And and, uh, let me just uh, tell the users, I've measured uh, wireless Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, commonly called RF, and uh, I don't broadcast when I go buy booths there at the Consumer Electronics Show. What I do, if they ask me, you know, I'm honest, so I'll tell them. And then one lady asked me, and she said, oh, we're so proud. We have Bluetooth, which is safe. But Bluetooth oh. is not safe. Remember the mouse I measured was 144,000. Yes. And they had their – and think about now the wireless headphones. Right. Oh, Those yes. Headphones are, are just constantly, and even though you're not listening to music at that second or making a call or whatever, every 6 to 30 seconds, that literally goes off thousands of times to safe level. And I was at, a, at my chiropractor's office, and I was in there, and I had done an audit of his particular establishment. And so he said, you know, I had a lady in here, and she, was, she had melanoma. I said, oh, melanoma, that's, that's not good. She says, I wonder if she was thinking, I wonder if the Bluetooth earpiece was causing that. Remember, it goes off every 6 to 30 seconds, even if she's not making a call. I said, well, was the melanoma on the opposite side of her face than the Bluetooth in her ear? He said, no. She said it was on the same side. I said, well, was it above the Bluetooth device or below the Bluetooth device? He said, no. It was right underneath the Bluetooth device. And, oh my gosh. and again, I can't prove that that Bluetooth device caused that melanoma, but I can prove if that lady would have taken that off and put it, you know, 10, you know, 10, 20 feet away, 30 feet away, there's no way that could have caused the melanoma on the side of her face. Wow. Oh so, my but we goodness. do have solutions to all this. That's a good news. Yes. We don't want to get too far down we have solutions for all these things right okay we'll be right back in three minutes you are tuned in to the republic broadcasting network visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Extend your 
When your doctor tells you you have bad cholesterol or blockages in the arteries, what do you do? When diet and exercise is not enough, we try medications and hope for the best. For the last two decades, I have been telling people about a natural method to help solve these problems and more. Extendivite can help maintain cardiovascular health and lower blood lipid levels in adults. The seven herbs in Extendivite are known to work together synergistically to get the results we hope for. There are many testimonials on Extendivite's effect on circulatory-related ailments. Get Extendivite today to start your journey back to a healthier life. To order, call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com or see us on amazon.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER staff. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. Sixty years of research has gone into chelation. And Angioprim is the result, a safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now to Angioprim.com. That's A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M.com. Or to speak with a trained consultant, give Angioprim a call at 954-882-7221. That's 954-882-7221. Corporate media dominates the American opinion. Finding independent voices that counter this avalanche is becoming increasingly difficult. With the endless corruption running rampant throughout our government, independent voices are needed more than ever to battle the offensive against our freedoms and liberties. As a listener of RBN, no one understands this concept better than you. Now it's up to you to do your part. The time has come for you to take action and begin broadcasting the truth to hundreds or thousands of people every month. Sound impossible? Quite the contrary. With pointed slogans from LibertyStickers.com, you can reach countless sleeping Americans unaware that they live in a real-life wonderland. LibertyStickers.com has a huge inventory of political bumper stickers and messages that reflect the truth about our government, our politicians, and the future of America. With so many in stock, there's one perfect for you. Visit us today at LibertyStickers.com. Again, that's LibertyStickers.com. Do your part. Your voice is important. Let it be heard. All righty, welcome back. Our guest is William Cadwallader. His website is stopdirtyelectricity.com. And, um, I just want to ask one question about smart meters, uh, a question that came in via email. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of silly, but I already, I already sent him an answer. But um, a friend of this, of this individual who emailed me said, my friend says that people at the electric company have been using her smart meter to watch her getting dressed in the morning. <laughs> and I said, I told him that his friend was full. But uh, but it brings up a question. Uh, we have the right, according to the Constitution, to enjoy, the, enjoy privacy, a, a certain measure of privacy. <clears throat> and with smart meters and all the other technology that, are, that is being placed within our homes without our consent, Really, without our consent and and uh, c- complete knowledge about their function, uh, they are going against the Constitution because we do have a right to privacy, which has been totally ignored by the corporations and and by Congress. Right? Yeah, there was. 
yes, there was a court case recently that dealt with that, and unfortunately the court ruled in favor of the utilities, saying, yes, you do have a right, but privacy, and again, I'm not an attorney, so whatever the exact words, you know, I'm not reading them, but even though you have a right to privacy, it's a greater good that if they collect the information, something like that. Oh, sure. Some term like that. Sure. Yeah, something like that. And I do want to talk about smart meters and 5G, about the data collection. So what they do is, with a smart meter, literally all the information is downloaded starting at midnight, and it might go to 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. in the morning, and these meters are sending. So every particular electrical device you have has an electric profile. And once something gets approved by the government or the UL, I'm sorry, by UL Underwriters Laboratory, you have to submit that profile. It's a huge database. So literally they can tell when you turned on your blender, what type of blender it was. Anything, any electrical device that you're turning on and off, they can tell exactly when you turn it on, how long you had it. And now they have the potential, and I've actually heard that they're selling that data. So they're making money off of your particular habits. And then similarly, 5G is collecting so much information now that they're going to sell. So the real moneymaker in 5G is, is what I've been told, is all the data they're collecting that they can now sell to people so they can offer you products or services. So literally, that's one reason they have all these sensors, because they want to know everything about your life. Uh, they want to know what products to offer to you, who's in the house, how old they are. Uh, they can just tell all these different habits, and they're going to make tons of money is what I've been told based on all the data they're collecting from all these 5G smart devices as well as smart meters. But uh, there are no cameras, as far as I know, on a smart meter. It just sends out uh, wireless signals. Well, that's very interesting. Um, And I kind of knew that. That's why I responded the way that I did. Oh, thank you for doing that. Um, I, I did want to mention one thing on the printer. So someone will come through, and remember, there's good, better, and best solutions to all of this. A hardwire is the best, but if you can't hardwire something, then keep it off as much as possible. But I do want to say, anytime you hardwire a device, normally, if it had Wi-Fi, wireless, or Bluetooth capability, by hardwiring a device, it does not turn those off. You physically, after you hardwire it, you have to go in and turn those off manually. And some of the problems is some of those devices, even though you turned it off maybe a day or two later or maybe a month later, they might come on back on by themselves. So normally what I say is after you've hardwired a device whenever possible, then what you do is when you don't need the device, let's say it's a printer, then you cut the power to that printer. So even if the Wi-Fi or wireless comes back on, you're not getting radiated oh. and then turn the power and turn. So any device that you have in your house, like a smart TV, Apple TV, any of those, Roku, any of those devices that have a Wi-Fi or wireless or Bluetooth capability, the only way to make sure that the, they're stopping is you can't just turn them off. You actually have to cut the power. So with a power strip, uh, they have remote on, uh, remote control on and off that you plug into the wall. I carry them with me, and so normally any EMF audit I do, I spend about 25% measuring, you know, what the issues are, and then I spend the other 75% at a home, business, or school fixing what the problem is. So, again, whenever possible now, if it has a wireless component, turn it off. I mean, cut the power to it, and then whenever you need it, just put the power back on. Because there's just so many, I I can't tell you how many devices. I was south of Phoenix, and I was doing an an audit, and uh, I finished about 5 o'clock for that day, and the lady said, come back at uh, at 8 o'clock the next day. I got a text from her. She said, I didn't sleep at all. Please come back later. I got back there about 10 o'clock, and I said, what happened? She said, I left the printer off, just plugged in. 
and it was a 4,500 square foot house. She was in one corner of the house and the printer was in the other corner. And wow. even though it was off, it was still doing Wi-Fi, wireless, and Bluetooth. Because oh. what they do with devices now is they say anytime someone says, I want something, then it wakes up and then it sends it. But it has to constantly be sampling to see if anything uh, is trying to use its services, you know, like a printer or something like that. Now, it doesn't happen on all printers, but, again, there's just too many that I've seen. So when I come out, I try to give a solutions that rock solid, that nothing, you know, that it's going to be well. So always cut the power if it has any electronic device, has any wireless Wi-Fi or Bluetooth capability. Good idea. Oh, my gosh. This is amazing. And and getting back to the collection of information, um, sometimes when I'm just browsing, I will have on the right-hand side of my monitor, uh, they will have uh, advertisements for another company that I have that I have purchased from and some of the same types of items that I purchased. So they're already keeping track just via the computer of your purchases so that they can appeal to, appeal to you to, uh, so that your information is already being sold. And people who put all their yes. information, yes. their private information up on Facebook are very foolish. Right. Right. It is being sold at this point in time. Facebook, advertisers on all the major browsers, they they literally have groups of people. Their only job is to find similar products. So right. That's what they do. And, and I know, I know a friend of ours, their uh, son just graduated with a computer science degree and he went to work for a large corporation. His job is to find similar products when you buy a product. To say, you might also want that. That's right. his entire job. That's all wow. he does. Really. That's all he does. And again, there's not just him for this entire big corporation. There's a lot more other people doing the same thing, you know, depending upon the category of product, you know. Sure. Wow. That, that is just, that is just amazing. Um, and, and of course we, we all love our, well, we thought computers were wonderful because it gives, uh, people an opportunity to interact with people they would not have interacted with before. Um, it gives, well, people like me who, who do a, a broadcast about, uh, about things. Um, people like you, they, they wouldn't have this ready access without the technology. Uh, so there's, but there's so much bad that goes along with, with the good. And the other thing too is, um, I remember, uh, hearing people who, hearing about people who smoked, or smoke, smoked, um, that, uh, people always think, oh gosh, that's never gonna happen to me. Uh, somehow they thought that they could avoid getting cancer by smoking something with a filter on it, or, that they right. could avoid getting it because, well, what are the chances? that Those are other people get that. I'm not going to get it. And uh, they they want to keep doing what they're doing because they like it. And, and so it's, it's pretty difficult to convince them that what they're doing uh, is really very dangerous. And uh, they can avoid it by saying, well, I, you know, I, I'm feeling fine or whatever. Or they just simply won't listen. They'd want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's why we published the book. That's why we put the book out there. We're trying to get the information to as many people. And, and someone says, hey, there's probably not very many studies. So ah. in the early 2000s, in the early 2000s, when the tobacco industry settled with all the states, 
you know, saying, hey, this is all bad. Do you know how many studies there were? There were 60,000 studies. So I often ask people, well, how many studies would it take you not to smoke? You know, they say 5, 10, 20, 30, you know, whatever number it is, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There are over 5,000 scientific studies now linking linking exposure to electromagnetic radiation to a very large number of diseases. So often I say, well, how many studies will it take? There are already so many. There are already over 5,000. And in our book, what happens is they literally pay scientists the uh, cell phone companies, if a study, there was a huge, I think it was over $25 million that came out, the National Toxicology Program, and they had mice or rats, and they proved that the close, this radiation caused uh, tumors on the heart as well as messed up the heart as well. And so they spent all that money to to actually do that, but then they actually never took any standards or they never did anything to change it. But again, that was just one study that they'd done. And so often when a study comes out then, then industry pays scientists to actually replicate the study. And then in my book, I actually have ways of replicating the study, but where you can change things to get a different result. Maybe you don't quite go quite as long. Maybe this, you know, uh, a number of different things, and I actually have how you can actually manipulate studies. So one study did this, but you can pay scientists to do that. And you mentioned Dr. Milham. So mm-hmm. he was, after he retired in the early 90s from the Department of Health of the state of Washington, he became an expert witness in this electromagnetic radiation. So he used to testify for people who were having trouble with it, and this was the early, you know, 90s when there wasn't a lot of this around. And then he would always see this this gentleman from the utility company, you know, being the expert witness saying, you know, Mm -hmm. there's no problem. And, you know, over and over, and finally he caught him in the hall and he said, hey, you know this stuff is bad. You know this stuff is affecting us. And that gentleman looks Dr. Milham right in the eye and say, I cannot give up my $250,000 retainer to testify for the utility companies if I testify once or 20 times. He was getting $250,000, and that was in the early 90s. And do you know who paid his salary? Our uh-huh. utility bills paid the study to actually Oh, my represent. gosh. Oh. And he was getting two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. It was either two hundred or two hundred and fifty thousand. I I'd have to go back and get the exact number. Either two hundred or two hundred and fifty thousand just to say there's no problem. And our utility bills paid that scientist his salary. And he said, I know it's a problem, but I can't give up, let's say, two hundred thousand dollars a year. The love of money, right? Yeah, yeah. So People are paid, and, and often uh, often you have to find out if they're getting compensated for what they're doing. Right. And, and you're never going to hear about this on the news. The nightly no. news uh, is, is, of course, part of the telecommunications. And, right. Uh, right. And all of the, the, the news, there used to be 86, 87 different entities that broadcast news in the United States. And this was under Reagan. He got rid of the Fairness Act and and just a lot of other things. And then pretty soon it dwindled down to to five entities that produce all of the wow. news. There you for, go. And, and they're not gonna they're not gonna tell us because look who pays their salaries. Look look who advertises on on the news advertising uh, on the on TV, uh, you have right. allopathic medicine advertising with your big pharma ads, and then you have um, what other advertisements? Uh, pro- well, uh, for uh, cell phone. technology, yeah, the yeah, latest cell phones, technology. all the cell phone providers. Yep. Yeah. yep. And there was a lady called Anne Louise Gittleman. I don't know if you're familiar with her. 
Anyway, um, she's written. She's a nutritionist. She's written a lot of books, and so she wrote a book in 2009 or 2010 called Zapped because oh, she that, developed I have a that tumor. Book. Yeah, I yeah, and she she wrote uh, wrote a, a book because she actually had a tumor close to her sal- salivary gland. And she said, how could I do this? I'm eating right. I'm doing everything right. And it was the constant use of the cell phone is what she attributed to. And so she got, she was scheduled for all the big morning shows and everyone was happy to see her. And then all of a sudden she got a call and said, you know, upper management and our attorneys won't let you come on. Because if we put you on talking about how to use things safer, then we have to put the other side on saying that there's really not an issue. And that was back in... I think 2010, 2011. Wow. Oh, my gosh. And so people get all their information from the TV. Uh, They're not going to, you know, they're just not going to go any further, investigate any further. Okay, we'll be right back in three minutes. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Public Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. Homeowners, if your lender has gone out of business or sold your transaction to another lender or servicer, you may be the victim of a wrongful foreclosure resulting in the loss of your home. If you've already lost your home, are in foreclosure, or even in good standing, you can challenge the mortgage transaction's illegal issue and your property can be restored to you. And your foreclosure can be stopped or reversed and the mortgage transaction declared unenforceable. State laws, U.S. title codes, the Uniform Commercial Codes, and U.S. Supreme Court rulings have upheld that defective mortgage documentations can reverse or stop foreclosures and enforce property title claims in favor of the homeowner. We are having successes in stopping the process of foreclosure, the enforcement of the foreclosure judgments, the sale of property, and evictions after the sale. We are not attorneys, and we don't give legal advice. We are a professional team of legal researchers, providing forensic mortgage audits and expert witnesses. We have the knowledge to produce the evidence and enforce laws regarding your legal issues. We've been in business for 12 years without a complaint. Consultations are free, and we provide a free title search to confirm if your mortgage has legal defects. Please call 855-253-3748. 855, the number 2, keep it today. Corporate media dominates the American opinion. Finding independent voices that counter this avalanche is becoming increasingly difficult. With the endless corruption running rampant throughout our government, independent voices are needed more than ever to battle the offensive against our freedoms and liberties. As a listener of RBN, no one understands this concept better than you. Now it's up to you to do your part. The time has come for you to take action and begin broadcasting the truth to hundreds or thousands of people every month. Sound impossible? Quite the contrary. With pointed slogans from LibertyStickers.com, you can reach countless sleeping Americans unaware that they live in a real-life wonderland. LibertyStickers.com has a huge inventory of political bumper stickers and messages that reflect the truth about our government, our politicians, and the future of America. With so many in stock, there's one perfect for you. Visit us today at LibertyStickers.com. Again, that's LibertyStickers.com. Do your part. Your voice is important. Let it be heard. guest is Bill Cadwallader. He, his website is StopDirtyElectricity.com. He is the author of Expose the Electronic Sickening of America and How to Protect Yourself. Includes dangers of 5G and smart devices. Um, in that act that you mentioned uh, previously, yes. um, it states uh, a consumer act- activist Ralph Nader argued that the act was an 
example of corporate welfare spawned by political corruption because it gave away the incumbent to incumbent broadcasters valuable licenses for broadcasting digital signals on the public airwaves. There was a requirement in the Act that the FCC not auction off the public spectrum, which FCC itself valued at between 11 and $70 billion. So, so that is the issue. What happens is you have a, a, uh, or a uh, wireless Wi-Fi and Bluetooth out there because the more that goes out there, the more they get paid. Right. In fees. Mm-hmm. And again, as we talked about, the head of the FCCs are actually industry. And in the book, we talk about revolving doors. Oh, yes. Uh, how often, uh, how often, and we, and we go down by industry, what the revolving door is, meaning they've come from industry, they work at government, and they go back, and what the percentage of words revolving doors. And remember, these are the top level guys who really determine what direction these agencies are going to go. They're the ones that get put in into office into those particular jobs. So, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of good people at all these agencies, but they're so low, they're so far down, they're not determining the standards and what direction they're going. It's the people at top that uh, get put in there, and almost all of them are from uh, industry. As, and that goes for the current administration, that all the people in all those departments are from the industry. So if the swamp has not been cleaned, it's just been um, business as usual. Yeah, there's a lot of money there. Yes. Oh, gosh. Okay, so let's talk about some solutions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, we sort of, uh, we, and, and the good news is we do have solutions for almost all of this. And, uh, and so I just want to let your, uh, listeners know that all, 99% of everything I've talked about, there are solutions. Okay. Now there are 12 chapters in the book. Oh, okay, we're at the top of the hour. We will be okay. right back, and we'll take some calls with questions. About Even better. Questions. Even better. Right. We'll be right back. being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Republic Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcasts. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. This is RBN, the Republic Broadcasting Network. Welcome 
welcome back. This is Deanna, and our guest is William Cadwallader. His website is StopDirtyElectricity.com. He is a certified electromagnetic radiation specialist and the author of Exposed, The Electronic Sickening of America and How to Protect Yourself, which includes dangerous 5G and smart meters. And I was just reading in Chapter 4 about uh, Google and... Um, oh, gosh... Um, yeah, they know what, what we're doing. They they know about our personal da- data, email, passwords, oh, yeah. search history. And he says, uh, we don't need you to type at all because we know where you are with your permission. permission. We know where you've been with your permission. We can more or less guess what you're thinking about. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> oh. And they refer to that as the creepy line. We go all the way up to the creepy line. Yes. Amazing. Okay, we do have a caller from Texas. Let's take take John. John, welcome. (laughs) Yeah, hi, Dan. Uh, Hi, Bill. I appreciate you all's work. Hi. Um, Sure. Yeah, I I have a question. Uh, I I mean, I, I, I have a cell phone. Um, and the only thing I use it for is to listen to RBN, and I've always known about the EMF problem, but, uh, I've always wondered about Bluetooth. I have, I have a question, excuse me, I have a question for Bill. I have a, uh, I'm hard of hearing, and I, and I wear, I have hearing aids. That, that are connected to uh, a Bluetooth connector that uh, connects my cell phone to my hearing aids. Uh, Bill, what's your opinion on that? And should I wear a pendant uh, or something like that to take care of that? No. No, a pendant wouldn't help the radiation coming off those. So remember when I go out, I have a good, better, and best solution. The best solution is go in and disable, have the manufacturer where you bought it disabled the Bluetooth. Because every 6 to 30 seconds, even though you're not making a call, it sends out radiation right to both ears. And, um, yeah, it's a real problem with modern uh, hearing aids. They have that Bluetooth connection. And I've measured them with my meters, and similar to the mouse, you know, it's in the tens of thousands, if not over a hundred thousand, and it's just it's just really not good. And uh, the other thing, uh, if you say I, there's no way I can do it, so you limit the time you use your your uh, your hearing aids, you know, and then what you do is you make sure you turn them off. Is there not an off switch on them? Uh, you have to you have to open the battery compartment and turn them off. Yeah, that's the problem with a lot of those type of things because if you don't turn those off, even though you're not in your ear directly, they'll still be broadcasting. So again, uh, first the best solution is get the go to the manu- uh, go back to where you bought them and try to have the Bluetooth completely turned off or disabled. Another choice, and and again, hearing aids are very expensive. Another uh, idea would to buy a hearing aid if they can't do that that has no Bluetooth in it. And again, that that has that is not Bluetooth enabled. It has no Bluetooth. Okay. Because the Bluetooth is just going off all the time. Okay. All right, Bill. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. That was my question. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wish I had a better solution for you. Thank you, John. But that's, that's even oh, a, you too, a Deanna. good solution. Thank you, John. Okay. We have uh, Sebastian in Sweden. Sebastian? Uh, yes. Hello. I would like yes. to, uh, to ask a question about the uh, 5G. Now, I haven't heard anything about 5G being, uh, um, they're going to put it out in Sweden. I don't know if maybe your guest has any information on that, but uh, as far as I know, like 
right now, I think Sweden is one of the uh, countries in the world that uh, are taking out fiber. Like, I live in the country in the middle of nowhere, and I have a fiber optic cable to the house. So that would eliminate my need for 5G, 5G down here as far as, you know, surfing on the Internet and, and all that. And another so, thing i like so to five, ask you. Mm-hmm. Yes, go ahead. A 5G is normally related to wireless communication. And and just to let you know, it's they've developed a lot of in- infrastructure for 5G, like newer antennas and things. But that infrastructure currently, they're pumping 4G signals through that, and the G just stands for generation. So where I live in Las Vegas, I I notice 5G antennas, the infrastructure 5G, what they developed, but currently they're pumping 4G through those antennas. Eventually, they'll put 5G through it, and in some places, they're doing that. But normally, when they talk about 5G, it's normally wireless communications. Okay. And another question I'll like ask is the, uh, I live right behind uh, a huge, uh, and um, what do you call it, these wind generators, right, park. Yes, uh, right behind the house, but it's it's maybe 300 meters away. Do they put off any radiation as far as uh, RF or anything, you know, to they produce electricity? Actually, Google owns them, all 22 of them. They're 200 meters high. I hate them. I, uh, I think it makes the landscape really terrible. Yeah, so uh, there's three radiations from wires. There's electric radiation, magnetic radiation, or what's called dirty electricity. So wind generators, either solar solar or wind generators, would generate dirty electricity. So to measure to see if it's affecting your home, you can go to greenwavefilters.com, and they have a meter that you can buy, and you can actually plug into your wall and you can tell how much dirty electricity you're getting uh, overall. And if it's a very high number, then there's filters that uh, that actually are sold. There's there's two of them that are plug-in filters, and then there's three whole house filters by different manufacturers. Uh, also, Stetzer, uh, Stetzer, a gram, uh, Stetzer sells a, a meter as well to measure those. So there's two dirty electricity meters that are the most popular, but I would first check with the meter to see how much you uh, uh, are getting into your home. And now there could be other sources. Your neighbor, any electronics you have in your home would also generate dirty electricity. But if it's a very high number, around 17, 18, or 1900, then uh, your the generators are probably producing some of that, if not a lot of it. Okay, I see. And then, uh, like uh, last time, I uh, I put my cell phone on um, what do you call it, on uh, airplane mode uh, when I yeah. go to bed. When I'm and I, I'm going to start doing it more and more. I, the last time I did it, actually, there was another guest uh, that Diana had on her show. And that's when I put it. So I have to remember to to keep putting it on on airplane mode. But can I ask a question? Can they? Can Big Brother listen to the cell phone when it's on airplane mode? Like if I'm discussing something with a friend, can they come in and listen? Because I heard that people say they can listen to your cell phone even if you don't, you know, even when the battery's turned off. I don't understand that. Yeah, Do you know I've, anything I've about that? People, I've, I've heard some people say that, but if you turn airplane mode on and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off, you always have to check to make sure Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off then you're completely disconnected from the network. Uh, and uh, so uh, sometimes phones turn Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off automatically when they go to airplane mode. And if you get an update, let's say uh, your cell company cell sends you an update, uh, when you turn airplane mode on, sometimes even though it was turning it off, it doesn't turn it off anymore. So every so often, make sure... Airplane mode turns Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off. You always have to check that. And then when you're charging it, make sure it's off your nightstand. So my 10 things you can do 
uh, 10 ways to reduce radiation. You want to get that off your nightstand because the charger itself produces normally electric radiation, magnetic radiation, and dirty electricity, and that can come as far as six to eight feet out. So if you're charging a phone, charge it in a bathroom or on the other side of the phone, uh, other side of the room, sorry. Oh, I see. It really goes that far, does it? Six to eight feet. Six to eight feet from the wired radiation. So that's why okay. when you go into a home and you normally have wires behind the head of your bed, that electric radiation can actually come six to eight feet out. And so normally we have, uh, can you turn in, you're in Sweden, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. We have, we have 220 uh, volts 220. here. 220, that's Yeah, correct. the green wave, yeah, the green wave uh, meter would work as well as the stature uh, meter would work measuring dirty electricity. But do you have a switch that turns your outlets off in your room? You know, your plugs, uh, you know, no. plugs in the wall? No, I don't. Well, I have to go to the main box in the hallway okay. when you come in. Or the outside, I have a box outside. It's where they put that, uh, they installed the smart meter. And, you know, we didn't have any oh, wow. say about it. Yeah. yeah, they did it about two or three years ago. But that's in a metal sure. box. Now, is there any way I can, uh, if I put metal all around it, would it, like, just shut it off? <laughs> is there any way you can... Uh, no. A smart meter creates two types of radiation. If it's a broadcasting smart meter, it creates wireless radiation, and it creates it maybe every minute or two or every five minutes telling the uh, utility net, uh, computers, hey, I'm still a good meter, I'm still working. But then also most people don't know is smart meters create dirty electricity three types, three ways, just by it turning on, it's creating dirty electricity. Every time it sends a signal out saying, hey, I'm okay, it sends a pulse of radiation through your wires in your home. And then what it also does between midnight and about 4 or 5, it's sending the data dump for the day before all your particular habits and uh, what what the electrical appliance used to turned on, turned off, and things like that. So um, what I would do is get like the Green Wave or Stetzer uh, filters, and then uh, I would get a meter, and then I'd plug the meter in and then see what it is, and I would use those plug-in filters to see if you could reduce the dirty electricity caused by that device, uh, the smart meter. I see. The smart meter is on the outside of the house, completely opposite uh, where, I'm, where I have my bedroom now. So right. It's, uh, what it does is... Mm -hmm. When it sends out a pulse of radiation to tell the network it's still alive and when it does the data dump, and the network could be as little as every five seconds or as much as every ten minutes, but when it does that, it sends a pulse of radiation uh, through a uh, pulse of dirty electricity through all the wires of your home. And that's why you need, uh, that's why I would recommend that you actually put in plug-in filters to knock that uh, radiation down. From dirty electricity. I see. But you I need a meter. The, I, mm -hmm. and that that yes. link, those those that link is on your website. Uh, yes, yes, I have the link for the meter and uh, for the filters, and or you can just you know do a Google search and uh, to go there. And uh, they gave me a discount of five percent. So again, I, I put that on my website. But as I always tell people, you know, search the Internet and wherever you can get the best price, you know, just do that. Okay, thank you very much for all the information. You're welcome. Sure. Thank you. All righty. Um, let's take Ken in New York. Ken? Hi, Deanna. Hi, William. Um, I used to uh, repair uh, consumer electronics when they were worth repairing. And uh, when I started seeing microprocessors being put in uh, televisions, for example, you know that when you push the button and you turn the set off, about a third of the power is still running with the exception of the screen. So the button doesn't actually cut the power if it tells the microprocessor 
to turn off part of the set, but obviously it has to have enough power to keep itself running so that it can interpret the button command to turn on again. So you're absolutely yeah. right when you're talking about cutting off the power. After, let's say after you're done using it for the night. But the only thing I would caution is that when don't you, uh, for example, I use a strip next to the uh, yes. the amplifier and the television and you know whatever's in the TV room. I always turn the set off first using a remote control and then kill the power because if you kill the power while the set's running, you may end up bricking the operating system inside the set, and the next time you turn it on, it may not work anymore. It might be off in Never Never Land. No, that's a great that's a great uh, suggestion. Yes, always turn off any device that you have, as Ken had said, and then whenever you get to that point, use a power strip to cut the power completely off. So, great suggestion. Yeah, just, and uh, the other, the question I would ask you now is uh, for. Almost 28 years, I had three old Uniden portable phones. I have, I use DSL, and I keep my Wi-Fi radio turned off, and I have wiring in the house. And um, mm -hmm. um, I got to the point where I could no longer strip from three telephones to keep them working. Oh, so yeah. I just went out and yeah. bought. <laughs> I went and bought a brand new old stock. It's like NOS on eBay. You'll see that uh, acronym used. I bought myself a brand new. 25-year-old set that was new. Uh, it just happens to be a Sony. It has all the features that they have today, except it runs at 49 megahertz. Okay. Rather than microwave frequencies. Sure. And that's what I typically use for a walk-around phone. Yeah, uh, that's that's a good thing. The the brand new phones. Uh, actually, the base is in the U.S. and this is mainly U.S. and Canada. Even though you hang up the handset, the base will continually broadcast just like a router. So if you get an older type phone, 900 megahertz, you know, something old enough, um, and it's, and make sure it's not called a deck phone, D-E-C-T. So if it's called a deck phone, then even though you hang it up, it'll constantly broadcast like a router. And because it's a wireless phone, I would always yeah. recommend Whenever possible, when you use that phone, to use it in a speaker mode if you can. Because mm -hmm. it'll have the same effect as a cell phone next to your head because it's broadcasting. So uh, if, if you want the advantage of a walk-around phone, you've done perfect by getting a very old one, or an older one, rather. And then it's an on-deck phone, D-E-C-T. And then, but what I would caution or recommend is that whenever possible, use it in a a speaker mode. Oh, sure. And I don't carry it around with me all the time. I only use it, yeah. for example, when I'm calling up, you know, a radio show. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, and then oh, also, uh, wherever uh, your chargers are, make sure your chargers are six to eight feet away from you normally where you stand, sit, or sleep because there's three types of radiation that can come off the charger. Electric right. radiation, well, magnetic radiation, and good electricity. <laughs> This one, this one has an iron transformer in it, so I don't think that's an issue. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's not wow. a switching supply. That is an older phone. Um, that is an oh, older yeah, phone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's brand new. It's got a caller ID. Yes, it does talk back and forth to the handset, but again, it's sure. at uh, 46 to 49 megahertz. And, okay. um, oh, by the way, uh, microwave is not necessarily 1. gig and 2 gig. It starts at around the end of 800 megahertz. So it's really the original microwave ovens that have large cavities are running at 915 uh, megahertz, and the smaller the cavities go up to where the Wi-Fi frequencies are. I stopped using a microwave, by the way, almost 10 years ago. Oh, good. I just won't use them, and I use a convection oven. I throw them away every couple of years. Okay, great, gentlemen. We are going Thanks to for a those quick tips. break. Thank you, Ken. We'll be right back. Thanks, Ken. Folks, we're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. 
The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now, but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind, and then common core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge. And knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20, 30, 40, 50, if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. Click the Donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truth will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. Without the right accessories, any guy can be off the mark. Whether you've invested thousands in your arsenal or you own a single trusted firearm, a visit to aroutfitting.com is in order. It's one of the finest online selections of tactical optics and AR parts and add-ons, like EOTech, quick target acquisition with no peripheral loss. Browse the full range of Nikon scopes and binoculars. aroutfitting.com can illuminate your world with streamlight gun-mounted lights from keychain to large handhelds up to 1,100 lumens. Find some stability with Battenfield Tactical Bipods. AirOutfitting.com has CMMG gun parts, barrels, assemblies, handguards, part kits, and more. Plus magful clips and magazines. I know I've got you excited, so take a breath. Head to AirOutfitting.com. The site's super easy to navigate and features a ton of technical info, including links to manuals. We also welcome vendor and manufacturer inquiries. Remember, if you don't see it, we can get it at AirOutfitting.com. It starts with you and me. It starts with you and me. We all can be heroes if we take the lead to change the bad to good, to live in harmony. It starts. Deanna and our guest today. We're very happy to have him on the program with all of his information. Is Bill Cat Cadwallader. He is the author of Exposed, the Electronic Sickening of America and How to Protect Yourself. Includes dangers of 5G and smart devices. His website is Stop Dirty Electricity dot Com. Okay, and we, we do have a uh, more questions. Um, what about magnetic fields from the motors in an electric car or even other electric motors like hair dryers or vacuums? Uh, good, good question. Magnetic fields are one of the three radiations from wires, electric radiation, magnetic radiation, dirty electricity. And so what happens is I actually measured a electric car recently, and they tend to have very high electric radiation, and they have higher uh, magnetic fields in them. Um, 
In my book, I talk about DDT, the new DDT dosage, distance, and time. So the key is, what is the device putting out? What's your distance from that device? And how long are you using it? So like a hairdryer, you're not sleeping all night long with it. You're just using it for a short period of time. There are low, lower magnetic field hair dryers made by Chai, C-H-I. So you can go into, I think, the Ultima uh, website or just a regular beauty supply, and you can order those. So that's what my wife uses. She has a lower uh, EMF, uh, EMF uh, hair dryer, and when they talk about low EMFs, normally they're just talking about magnetic fields. So that's probably what I do. What I do, I would do for a hair dryer. Uh, the electric, uh, your refrigerator has a large motor, puts out huge uh, magnetic radiation. So make sure you're not. And magnetic radiation goes out about three to six feet. Electric radiation goes out about six to eight. So normally, what I say is be concerned about six to eight feet. Uh, then you only have to remember two numbers. So I wouldn't put a head of a bed behind a wall that has a, uh, a refrigerator. I would move it to the other side and just think about maybe three to six or six to eight feet for magnetic fields to get away from that. There's also uh, electrical like HVAC, heating, ventilating, and cooling equipment, air conditioning equipment. You have to watch out where those motors are. So if you're in a in a room and right outside your wall on the outside is a large motor like an air conditioner or something like that, just make sure you're about three to six feet away from that. Okay. Wow. All right. Kitch, uh, kitchens can be very um, – in fact, you should unplug anything that you're not using, like a blender, or any, any, yes. anything. If you're not using yes. it, unplug it. Yeah, we also at at uh, the big box home, uh, you know, uh, um, building supply stores, they have what they call a toggle switch. So if it's too hard to, let's say, unplug a, bl- a blender because it's behind a lot of things, there's mm-hmm. actually a little switch that you can plug into the outlet, and oh. then you plug the blender into that, and it's lighted, and all you do is turn it on and off. So by turning in, most people don't realize that electric radiation is like water in a hose. So let's say you turn on a faucet, it fills up that hose with water if you have a nozzle on the end and it's not open. So that water is still in the hose and uh, even though the water is not coming out. That's what electric radiation is like. So wires in the wall, any extension cords you plug or any appliance in the kitchen you plug in, that's still... Uh, creating electric radiation on that wire. So whenever possible, we recommend that you unplug things or you put in a toggle switch so that you don't have the radiation coming from that wire coming out. Right. Okay. Um, We have Jerry in Chicago. Jerry? Uh, good afternoon, Deanna and Bill. Um, thanks for taking my call. Yeah. I've got one, uh, up to three questions here for you. About six years ago, they put a smart meter on my apartment, and I have a bank of my meter and four other meters right outside the door hinge of my back screen door. And I bought an EMF meter, and I happen to notice something that every 10 seconds and then every 40 seconds and then uh, every two minutes, this thing pings at a very high rate on each and every one of the meters at each uh, at separate times, which means that they're gathering information at least three times every two minutes. Um, now, I had some uh, copper window screening, and I just kind of held it around there and had somebody hold the meter, and it killed that signal. Hmm. Yes. Okay, so I'm eventually going to make something that fits over all five of the meters uh, out of copper and put it on at night. Now, I had a Faraday cage years ago that I put on my meter, and I ended up burning up the meter. And the meters are approximately, I believe, 550 to $600 a pop. 
So they had to come out and put it on there. And they stole my Faraday cage, which cost me about 115 bucks, and acted oh. real stupid about it. Uh, but, you know, I rewired my entire apartment, and I did a ground wire through all of the conduits. I chassis ground all of my junction boxes and whipped to the outlet and or switches, what were ever in the box, and light fixtures. Does that extra ground wire help in any way going back to the panel as far as the EM, EMF? Because I, I don't notice any uh, uh, with the signal on my um, uh, meter when I go up near the outlets or the switches. Um, so there's uh, three radiations from the wire. There's electric radiation, magnetic radiation, and dirty electricity. And then there's three radiations through the air, Wi-Fi, wireless, and Bluetooth, commonly called RF. So the uh, what type of meter do you have? Do you remember offhand? Oh, boy. I don't remember. It was uh, it was not the best. It was like the second best meter. Let me see if I can. Uh, okay. Go ahead and keep talking. I'll, normally, I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah. Yeah, normally that meter is measuring wireless radiation, Bluetooth, or or uh, Wi-Fi, and from those meters you would have a wireless signal. And so what happens is uh, when you work with electrical uh, wiring, then you're dealing with electric, magnetic, and dirty electricity. So your meter that's measuring wireless wouldn't change at all, but I would get two other meters to measure what what's happening on your wires. Uh, one would be like a green wave meter that I mentioned before that would measure dirty electricity. And then there's also a meter, let's say, the, like the TF2. Uh, it was the, uh, the earlier one made in 1989, started is the tri-field. But if you get a TF2, then that can measure electric and magnetic radiation. So you need to uh, measure all uh, the three radiations on the wire and then your other meter would measure the wireless. So you could tell if your radiation went down uh, by using one of those other two meters. Normally a ground wire, um, it, depends upon, uh, it depends upon how it was installed. Now I'm not an electrician or an electrical engineer. This is just what people have told me is a ground wire just basically uh, makes the system uh, work the way it's supposed to. It doesn't necessarily mean it will take uh, lower radiation from your wires in the wall. Okay. Uh, I, I, I grounded it just using the ground screw on yes. every one of the boxes and then, and then that, uh, um, tailed idea. off of that. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I ran aground only because it's a it's a four unit apartment. I didn't pull a permit to redo the electric. Got fined for that, but uh, I, I upgraded the electric, and when it got inspected, the electrical inspector made a comment about you don't see this kind of electrical work in nuclear power plants. So don't worry about oh, it. Good. As far as I'm concerned, this is the safest safest apartment that I've ever seen. But I the, the uh, I have an e. EM Fields um, Acousticom 2 meter, and it measures RF radio frequency inside, outside, uh, EM, uh, I, and that's it, apparently. I thought it uh, did more than this. Right. Yeah, the Acousticom okay, so you're is saying a little meter. Yeah, that measures Wi-Fi, wireless, and Bluetooth, commonly called RF. The Acousticom 2, uh, the big brother is called the Acoustometer. But then you need to measure dirty electricity, magnetic radiation, and electric radiation. And for those, uh, one meter is the TF2 that will measure magnetic and electric. Uh, it does have an RF setting, but I would use the Acousticom 2 for that. And make sure when you use it on the TF2, you never use it in the weighted position. And there's two numbers on it. There's one in the center that is large. That's the current. But then up in the top left, it's what the biggest number in the last three seconds. So only look at that top left number. And then whenever you measure electric, never hold it in your hand. You have to put it down and step away to measure electric. Oh, yeah, okay. Three, 
there's three positions for the meter. So one would, let's, let's say you're on a bed. You would put it on its back on the pillow. Then you would, this is electric only. Then you would slide it forward and so it has it standed up and take that reading. And then you would turn it on its side on the front of the pillow so it's pointing toward nine o'clock and record each of those three readings. And it's called the root mean square, uh, which is normally you square each of those numbers and then take the square root. But here's the simple way. Just take the, the highest number in that pillow position and then take the second highest number, 50% of it, and add those two numbers together. And then that gives you your exposure. Now, to find the levels of these, you would go to slt.co. There are a company in Canada that sells meters. Safe Living Technologies, slt.co. And over uh, on the right-hand side, up at the top, there's something called education. Go down about nine uh, nine levels, and then it'll give you the uh, exposure levels that you should be at. And this is what I use. They come from Germany. There's a no concern, slight concern, severe, and extreme concern. And so you want to make sure you use those numbers to see what you're doing. And then if you're on your bed, you would take nine measurements. You'd take three at the pillow, three at the torso, and three at your feet. And then you would take that highest number is your, is your exposure. Again, the highest number you would take, let's say the pillow was the highest, you'd take the highest number, 50% of the second highest number, and add them together to get your exposure. Okay. But you can't hold okay, it well, thank you to do an electric bill. Sure, you're welcome. Oh, thank you very much, and you guys have a blessed day. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Um, good questions. All righty. Um, we don't have any more callers at, at the present. Um, you were talking. Uh, would you want me to go over uh, the ten things that people yes. can download off my website? So yes. we we want to make sure we do solutions. So. Again, anyone can download this. And let me just, uh, let me just mention, Deanna, I send these to doctors' offices, uh, throughout the U.S. So a lot of them, or a number of doctors' offices actually have them in the front. They're a nice little trifold. It's a single page and it has these things. Uh, 10 ways you can reduce your radiation, actually 11. And so I do that for doctors or health pr- pr- uh, practitioners. That's part of my community service. They say, hey, I want 50 of them, then I'll mail it to them just so we get the message out. Great. Okay. And, okay. and again, the digital one is what the, the paper one looks like. So the very first one is move all electronic devices, including chargers and clocks, as far away as possible uh, at night to reduce radiation through the air and from uh, the wires. So, again, get everything off your nightstands. Get those as far away as possible. The second thing is always use speakerphone. Your cell phone is constantly trying to connect to a cell tower, uh, increasing radiation. So we know you can't do it all the time, but whenever possible, use speakerphone uh, so you're not exposed to that. The farther away, remember dosage, distance, and time. So if you're on a speaker mode, you're holding it farther away. So again, we know you can't do that all the time, but it, do it as much as possible. And then also, the next one, number three, turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and turn on airplane mode when carrying a cell phone close to your body and not in use. So that's what we talked about, always airplane mode on and uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off. That's that's the best. And I have a little story with that if, I, if we have time. Sure. So we were at a house in Southern California, and it was actually a workshop. It was for a firefighter, and he brings out his 19-year-old son. He said, oh, I wonder what this was about. He said, here's my 19-year-old son. My 19-year-old son has a hip replacement. Oh, yes. How can a 19-year-old oh. – how can that be? That, that, that doesn't make sense, right? you got to be 50-plus yes. or 60-plus to have that. What he did is, as a freshman in high school, he's 19 now, he took his phone and put it in his front pocket, kept it there all four years. Remember, it's going off every six to 30 seconds. He graduated. He was hiking behind his house, jumped off a small rock, and broke his hip. Something went wrong. 
So they rushed him to emergency, put him off the table, the operating table, and the first thing the surgeon found, she found a huge tumor right where he carried the phone, right exactly right. where it was. Then she went through the tumor. She couldn't believe her eyes. She could take her finger and stick it right through the bone. The bone yes. was completely dissolved. Isn't and it, that, Deanna, uh... I, I can't prove that that cell phone caused that. But I can prove if that cell phone was not in the pocket and was put, you know, a good distance away, that that cell phone could never have caused that. Yeah, that story was just terrible. I mean, it was... Yeah. It, it, 19 years old. Oh, gosh. And, oh. and I just talked to someone who knew that, who knew the family. You know, he's close to him. He says mm-hmm. he's got to go in for another surgery. So now, oh. the rest of his life, he's got to deal with that. Isn't that terrible? Yes, it is. Oh. And then number four is, is remove the router from the bedroom and any living areas and turn it off when you sleep or when not using Wi-Fi. So good, better, and best solution is never use Wi-Fi. Modern Americans really can't do that. So what we say is turn Wi-Fi on when you use it and then turn it off most of the time. And then electrahealth.com uh, has taken that Wi-Fi router. It has a push button, so you can turn it off easily. And then they've also reduced the radiation when it's in Wi-Fi mode over 95%. But when you look at the router, make sure you, you call your Internet provider to make sure that they can uh, use that particular router in their system. Right. Routers produce Wi-Fi and continually create radiation. Again, when we when we turn off routers, make sure any critical services or safety services or security services don't go through that router if you turn the router off at night. So a lot of times what we like to do is put the Wi-Fi button in so at least you turn the Wi-Fi off. And, again, you do have to watch out for Wi-Fi security systems now. So, again, you sort of have to balance, you know, the good with the bad, you know, what you can do. Right. And then number five. Replace all cordless home phones with corded landline phones. The base radiates just like a router, even when not in use. And then that's what we were talking, I think, about, uh, I think it was Ken uh, that talked about um, that he has a real old cordless phone. Any modern cordless phone, the base, even though you hang up the handset at the, at the base, it will constantly continue to radiate like a router. So what we recommend, if you don't need a cordless phone, that you buy a phone at one of the big box stores. There's an AT&T phone, costs $24, has a speaker mode as well, so you could use it hands-free. And if you need the uh, messaging part, you know, like a voicemail or things like that on the phone, then they sell that for about $34. And most of the big box stores have that. that that's a kind of... And then number, oh, good, good. And then on number six, uh, turn on airplane mode with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off when you're using a device if you don't need an Internet connection, such as reading a downloaded book. So that's what you were talking about, what we recommend on Kindles and other things, to actually download that and then turn airplane mode on, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi when you read it. And, uh, yeah, airplane mode on, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off. And uh, uh, I went to a, a Thanksgiving get-together in, um, in California, and there was a, uh, a distant relative I hardly ever see, and he came up to me at this Thanksgiving get-together and he said, I don't know if you know, but I had an abdominal tumor. I said, abdominal tumor? He says, yeah, it's all taken care of now, but he was wondering if his tablet had caused that. And I said, I'm not sure. How did you use it? Every night he got into bed, he laid in bed and put the tablet right on his stomach oh, without dear. turning anything off. So every 6 to 30 seconds, he was getting irradiated, and you can guarantee he's not doing that anymore. Right. And I think you talked about doing that yourself. Now, there's a whole side of this that I haven't mentioned is it has to do with the blue lights from the screen. Right. Uh, have you heard about the damaging that blue light can do? Oh uh, yes, I have glasses. I work. Gla- I have. Oh good. I have about six pair of glasses around the house that I can put on, 
uh, for watching TV or watch any screen. If you're in front of a screen, you need to wear a pair of these glasses. Right, and, and there's a number of people. Light. Yeah, there's a number of people who sell it. Uh, there's one in Carlsbad, California, called Raw Optics, R A, and then the word optics. But again, get any of those glasses that that would work, and to cut that blue light out, that's a whole other issue with all our new screens. Yeah, and then number I, seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Did I do with my uh, my iPad? I don't put it on my body at all. I I have um, I've kind of wrapped up a, a towel uh, and I put the uh, the iPad um, I set it up against the towel so that it's probably a foot away from me. Just just yeah. You, know. you mean when you're when you're act- when I'm actually reading when it. You're- yeah, uh, again, uh, once you have airplane mode on and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off, it's pretty safe for most people, so it shouldn't mm-hmm. be a problem. If someone wants to use an iPad to download the Internet or do things like that, then what we recommend is is they use it a minimum amount of time. And then the other thing is is that they actually sell solutions on uh, you can actually hardwire your uh, phone and tablets now. So there's connections that go from the phone or tablet to a uh, USB and then from there to the Internet. So if if someone really wants to cut it down while they're surfing uh, the Internet, you can actually use that. You would need a plug-in for an Ethernet as well. So, mm-hmm. so we, we do have clients who actually do that, who hardwire their phones at home and hardware their tablet. So, you know, when I go out, we have a good, better, and best solution. So that would be the best solution. A lot of people can't do it. So what we have them is try to minimize their time on the phone, on a tablet. And if they can get a desktop with a wired mouse and a wired keyboard that you talked about, that's very mm-hmm. important. And then turn Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off on that right. uh, on that right. particular desktop. And then seven, we say leave the room when you use a microwave. If you still have a microwave, the farther you uh, move, the less radiation you'll receive and reduce overall uh, microwave use as a whole. And on my website and YouTube channel, I have step away from the microwave. So it's sort of a dramatic uh, video. I play that video when I speak and I just show how far you need to get away. And I always recommend... I. Uh, uh, that watch out for your pets. So where are your pets when the microwave is on? But more important, even, that's important. And also, where is your pet cat or dog? Are they close to the router all day long? Are they sleeping there? Are they near a smart TV? Are they near a wireless devices? They're getting bombarded by these particular devices now. So think besides yourself, think about where your pets are too and try to turn things off to protect them as well or move them a greater distance away. Very, very right. important. There's more cancer now in, in pets than there's ever been. And I can't prove it's Wi-Fi, wireless, or Bluetooth, or some of the other radiation, but it is interesting. It's at an all-time high. Right. And, and then number eight, avoid... Pets, mm-hmm. pets never used to get cancer. Uh, no, the only thing that no. they used to get was if they got hit or or something like that. They didn't get human diseases. Now, they, now they're getting no. diabetes. They're getting all kinds of human diseases. Right. And there's a doctor, actually, uh, dirty electricity. I often get asked, out of these six radiations, electric radiation, magnetic radiation, dirty electricity from the wires, and Wi-Fi, wireless, and Bluetooth, commonly called RF, through the air, which is the worst. There are studies that show all of this is bad, and there is actually a doctor called Magda Havas, who's a doctor up in Canada, and she showed if the... Yeah, are you familiar with her? Yes. And she showed that with the dirty electricity, if it's above 32 on the meters, then actually in certain people, their blood... Uh, their uh, blood sugar can actually increase. 
it actually gets worse. Wow. So, yeah. So, again, we're just trying to reduce all of this as much as possible, reduce or eliminate. Right. So, num- number eight, avoid using portable electronic devices on your lap. We had talked about that. And turn all electronics off when not in use. Use them in battery mode and not plugged in and charging. And, again, what I'm reading right now is based, is on our website, so you can download this for free. And if you do use a laptop, if you use something, I'll wait till right. after the break. Oh, okay, we'll be right back in three minutes. Homeowners, are you in foreclosure, expecting to be served with a foreclosure lawsuit, or suspect your lender has coerced you into an illegal mortgage transaction? A huge number of mortgages made in the last 10 years have legal issues and are possibly defective. State laws and the U.S. Supreme Court have upheld that defective mortgage documents are grounds for foreclosure defense and for counterclaims in favor of the homeowner. If your mortgage has been sold or assigned since closing the loan, it may be defective and you may be paying the wrong party and the lender may not have standing or the right to foreclose or collect payments under the law. If you would like to know if your mortgage is legal or not or know if you are paying the right party, we can help. Our initial consultations are free of charge. We are not attorneys. We are legal researchers and work closely with experienced lawyers who know how to help you find the evidence to help you keep your home. Call toll-free 1-855-2-KEEP-IT. That's 1-855, the number 2, keep it today. Many people write us about their experience with Extendivite. Allow me to read you some from Amazon.com. This product is superb. I have been taking it for about a year now, and I can feel my cardiovascular system run like a Swiss watch. I definitely recommend this product for anyone that has high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and heart palpitations, A+. It's potent, but it works. I have been waking up for the past three years with numb hands, and a week into using Extendivite, my numb hand seemed to have cleared up. My circulation was off, and now it's back on track. So I'm happy. I feel so energized, and I have my husband on it now. My mother-in-law has cholesterol problems, so I bought her a bottle as well. Thank you so much. Love the product. Tell us your story. Get Extendivite today. Call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Public Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. All righty, welcome back. This is Deanna, and our guest is Bill Cadwallader. His website is StopDirtyElectricity.com. He is the author of Expose the Electronic Sickening of America and How to Protect Yourself. So we have about three minutes. So let's get through these 10. Yeah, we're almost done. And and I just want to let people know these are precautionary steps you can take today with little or no cost. There are advanced solutions. So uh, find a certified electromagnetic radiation specialist in your area and get an EMF home audit and remediation. And the way you find them is you go to a search engine and just type in find an expert building biology. 
and then a list of experts will come up. So, uh, and then there are advanced solutions dealing with shielding if someone has an outside source that they can't deal with, you know. So number eight, avoid using portable electronic devices on your lap and turn all electronics off when not in use. Use these in battery mode and not plugged in and charging. So whenever possible, use your devices in battery mode. And if you're searching the Internet, then keep them as far away as possible. And number nine, never use a Bluetooth wireless earpiece or wireless headphones. They generate radiation even when not on a call or playing music. They constantly generate. And uh, I didn't mention smartwatches, but smartwatches are one of the worst things that happen. So you got that on your wrist. It's constantly going off. You know, things like fitness devices on your wrist, and they're going off every 6 to 30 seconds, and it's very close to you. So we recommend you don't wear those. If you have to wear them for fitness, then wear them for one hour a day, and then the other 23 hours don't wear them. And number 10, determine if you have a new electrical utility smart meter with a digital display, and if you can, opt out, opt out of those. And then finally, the baby monitor. We recommend that you do not use a baby monitor. If you use one, it must be measured to determine if there is a safe distance for both the parent and baby. And if you go out to techwellness.com, their baby monitor is completely safe, and I'm sure there's other ones out there, so you can start there if you need one. So those are the 10 things you can actually download from our website. And they're all listed in the book? With uh, Listed in the book with over 30 additional pages. Actually, where you sleep, we have over 20, we have 24 things you can do to make your bedroom safer. And most of these are just one or two or three minute type solution. So that's what we tried to do. And, and something that you said earlier, um, when when we're talking about meters or you know spending three or four hundred dollars for for meters, if you if you need to have that many in your home, you have to ask yourself: is is three hundred or four hundred dollars worth the cost? Is my health worth more than three or four hundred dollars? You really have to, to 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 look at the compare. What is your body worth? Uh, getting cancer or something can cost you your life um, or several thousand dollars out of pocket. Um, you need to really make those comparisons. See, see where your values are, right? Exactly right. Thanks for mentioning that. I sure appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. It's such an honor to have you on the program, and thank you for presenting all this fabulous information. Bless you for doing this. Thank you so much. And thanks for having, having me to get this most important information on this topic out to people where they can do their own solutions. All righty, we'll have to do this again. Okay, thank you, Bill. I'd be happy to. Okay. Thank you, Deanna. Bye-bye.